Pampia, this is Kini News. Ano Ibrahim today questioned how some are okay with 200 million ringgit being given to a political party, but were not happy when 60 million ringgit was channeled to help rice farmers. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has claimed that he was criticized by several politicians for asking an entrepreneur to help poor rice farmers. However, he said when that entrepreneur pays millions in political funds, they kiss his hand. Anwar said this during his speech at the launch of MRT Putrajaya Line at the Serdang MRT Depot this morning. The Premier was referring to Tycoon Said Mokhtar Al-Bukhari, the owner of Bernas, who had to channel 60 million ringgit of his profits to rice farmers. Citing Al-Bukhari Foundation as an example, Anwar stated that the country needed a more transparent procurement system. Anwar said while Said Mokhtar can give a political party 200 million ringgit, some people were not happy when the billionaire was asked to give back 60 million ringgit to the rice farmers. Anwar initially proposed the idea of Bernas sharing its profits with its rice farmers last July while he was still the opposition leader. After being appointed as prime minister, he reprimanded the tycoon over the company's monopoly on rice imports. While Michelle Yeoh is celebrated globally, those involved in local film Mantega Terbang are not getting as much love in the country. In fact, they've been receiving death threats. Kairi Anua, the director of the controversial movie Mantega Terbang, has received a death threat. A message left at the director's house in Salango read, quote, You and your family must die. His car was also splashed with black and red paint. The Mantega Terbang movie is perceived by certain quarters to be a threat to Islam. Other notes found in his residence read, Islam will rise up, hashtag Mantega Terbang. In his police report cited by Malaysia Kini, the 31-year-old director mentioned that actor Arjun Tanaraju's car was also splashed with red paint and acid in Ampang. However, it could not be ascertained if Arjun had received similar threats. Kajang District Police Chief Zaid Hassan confirmed with Malaysia Kini that Kairi had lodged a police report this morning. The attacks come in the wake of police recording statements from the movie's producer and six actors. The film tells the story of a 15-year-old Aisha as she grapples with questions about life and death in various religions after her mother is diagnosed with a terminal illness. However, the Muslim Consumers Association and Putra found it offensive that the movie showcased a Muslim seeking answers in other faiths. The Islamic Development Department, Jakim, also found the content to be in contradiction with Islamic beliefs and the Muslim way of life in the country. Malaysia Kini has reached out to Kairi for further comments on the incident. The 8th telephone call saga continues with Wee Ka Siong today saying he has proved that the call he received was indeed made by Deepak. Wee Ka Siong has maintained that it was Deepak Jai Kishan who called him twice on Monday. The MCA president also urged the former carpet dealer to lodge a police report if someone had impersonated him. At a press conference held in Parliament this afternoon, we also furnish evidence in the form of screenshots of the caller ID to substantiate his claim. Untuk makluman, panggilan telefon tersebut dibuat pada jam 9.51 pagi selama 33 saat sebelum terputus. Kemudiannya, disusuli dengan panggilan kedua pada jam 9.52 pagi dengan perbualan selama 7 minit. Inilah bukti yang saya ambil daripada screenshot telefon bimbit saya. According to him, Deepak rang him on Monday using a phone number ending 9989 with the initial DJT on his WhatsApp profile. Jadi... Jika menggunakan aplikasi True Caller, hasil carian berdasarkan nombor tersebut dimiliki oleh seorang insan bernama Deepak J. Tekwani. We added that the profile picture of the caller on WhatsApp also resembled Deepak Jai Kishan. Sekiranya Deepak Jai Kishan berasakan ada orang yang menyamar atau impersonate beliau atas nama Deepak, membuat panggilan kepada saya pada 13 Mac 2023 jam 9.51 pagi saya menyeru agar Deepak Jai Kishan membuat laporan polis bagi membersihkan namanya saya bersedia bekerjasama 
dengan pihak polis diraja Malaysia PDRM dan akan mendedahkan segala bukti yang ada biarlah PDRM menyiasat perkara ini. However, the MCA president said the avatar was changed after he had revealed that Deepak had name dropped the Prime Minister's office. Yesterday, Malaysia Kini contacted the number cited by We. The owner of the number, however, claimed that he is not Deepak and addressed himself as Mr. Raja. He also claimed to be an aide of one of the shareholders of JNE Advanced Tech Sandirian Burhat. JNE is the sole company that Putrajaya allowed to import eggs from India during a local supply shortage. Speaking to Malaysia Kini yesterday, Deepak denied contacting We and links to JNE. New guidelines have been introduced for foreign artists, which include a ban on cross-dressing and stripping. Foreign artists performing in Malaysia must avoid holding performances during or on the eve of Islamic holidays. This is according to the Central Agency for Applications for Filming and Performance by Foreign Artists guidelines that will come into force in 2024. Exceptions will be granted if they have received permissions from the relevant Islamic authorities. The Islamic holidays listed in the new guidelines include the entire month of Ramadan. Other holidays include the Islamic New Year, Prophet Muhammad's birthday, Isra and Midraj, Nisful Sha'aban, Nuzul Al-Quran, Hari Raya Aidilfitri and Hari Raya Haji. Foreign artists are not allowed to hold performances on these days to show respect for religious activities. In comparison, Puspal previous guidelines from 2019 did not prohibit performances on the eve of these holidays, nor do they explicitly prohibit performances on religious holidays apart from Ramadan. As for dress codes, the new guidelines explicitly prohibit foreign male and female artists from removing their clothes during their performances. In addition, male performers are prohibited from cross-dressing as women. Hadi Awang has found an unexpected ally in the form of PKR's Hassan Karim when it comes to the past leader's right to speak in mosque. Past President Abdul Hadi Awang's defiance against royalty regarding his right to preach in mosque has received unexpected support. PKR lawmaker Hassan Karim said it is democratic for Muslims to listen to Islamic teaching not delivered by an official imam or preacher. Hadi had previously persisted in delivering sermons in mosques in Terengganu despite the prohibition by the State Islamic Council against doing so. Hadi claimed that there is nothing wrong with Muslim politicians delivering sermons in mosques or surahs. He said they have a duty to speak up on various matters including politics. Responding to this, the Pasir Gunang MP said at least there is somebody who dares to challenge. Hassan also expressed the view that no one, including royalty or any political party, should be allowed to monopolize Islamic matters. The prohibition against all politicians from delivering a lecture or sermon in all mosques and surahs across Tanganyu came into effect on March 2nd. The order was issued after state ruler Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin became upset that some politicians had delivered religious lectures or classes and led Friday prayers without approval. Datuk Roy may be out on bail now, but the MACC will be seeking a new remand against him tomorrow. The Kuala Lumpur Magistrates Court today released a man known as Datuk Roy on MACC bail. This is after the expiry of his three-day remand to facilitate an investigation into the Jana Wibawa program. However, he is said to be brought before the Putrajaya Magistrates Court tomorrow to be further remanded. His counsel, Fahmi Moin, said the remand tomorrow will be sought by the MACC to assist the investigation under Section 16 Bracket A of the MACC Act. Two days ago, the Kuala Lumpur Lower Court issued a three-day remand until today against Dato Roy in order to facilitate the MACC investigation under Section 17A of the MACC Act. Earlier this week, MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki reportedly said that Muhammad Hussein Muhammad Nasir, known as Dato Roy, turned himself in. Before that, Bernama reported that the authorities were searching for the man and urged the public to come forward with information. The report suggested that the individual was the mastermind of criminal activity. As religious issues continues to meet headlines, MUDA wants interfaith programs to be celebrated and not blocked. MUDA has opposed the banning of Muslims from attending programs at non-Muslim houses of worship. 
In a statement today, Muda Information Chief Lukman Long said that interfaith programs should be celebrated, not blocked. He also called the decisions irrelevant and said it does not help the community of multiple religions and races to live harmoniously. He added that Muda itself has held programs for all members, including the celebrations of Pongal, Hari Raya Aidil Fitri, Maulidur Rasul, Christmas Day, Taipusam and Chinese New Year. He said this after Selangor Religious Affairs Executive Councillor Muhammad Zawawi Ahmad Mugni said any program involving Muslims at non-Muslim houses of worship is not allowed. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news update. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Pia. Thanks for watching.